The mighty Montgomery Castle. How did this Welsh mega structure become nothing more than a pile of rocks? How big was this mighty fortress? Was it truly reminiscent of a sprawling fairy tale kingdom and the site of one of the largest medieval battles ever on British soil? Once an awe-inspiring fortress with sprawling structures and multiple layers of defenses, these majestic ruins once graced the hilltop. Today, little survives of this fortress, but it was described by a general as one of the goodliest and strongest places that I ever looked upon. The site known as Montgomery Castle underwent a series of transformations spanning from the early 13th century to the early 17th century. Each addition was meticulously designed to elevate it to the status of a castle at the pinnacle of defensive architecture. Initially built upon a rocky elevation, already a natural defensive position, the decision to encircle this plateau with a wall was an obvious choice for any defensive architect. On one side, a large ditch with only a narrow bridge leading to the gatehouse, while the rest of the surroundings presented a steep and rocky scramble. The first construction included the inner gatehouse and wall with a rear tower, which, however, did not stand for long. By the end of its first century, the renowned well tower was erected along with kitchens and a brew house. The well tower, functioning akin to a keep, served as the primary building with various functions. The limited space atop the rock likely contributed to the absence of a separate keep. The walls surrounding the bailey, or middle ward, along with the outer gatehouse, followed shortly after the construction of the first walls in the inner ward. During this period, most buildings within the walls were timbered, with only the kiln house evidence suggesting a stone structure. In the 16th century, Roland Lee added stone buildings for various purposes, and in the 17th century, Edward Herbert further reconstructed stone buildings within the outer ward. The defensive lines extended to additional stone walls near the base of the hill, while the remainder featured a wooden palisade wall. Despite completing the walls of Montgomery Castle, the town's defenses continued with stone walls surrounding a larger part of the town, creating a multi-layered defense reminiscent of a medieval fairy tale kingdom. Montgomery Town itself is adorned with medieval structures, including an Iron Age hill fort site just west of the castle, which, although not integral to this historical account, adds to the overall historical richness of the area. With a comprehensive understanding of the site's historical appearance, one can appreciate the formidable challenge of besieging not just the castle, but the entire town. Surrounding routes would need to be cut off, limiting attempts to a sizable force. The town walls, covering a vast area, posed a challenge to men and defend entirely. Approaching the palisade walls put a force within range of archers from the main inner and outer wards crowning the hilltop. Burning the palisades could be achieved with precaution and patience, but progressing beyond that point would come to a halt. A narrow bridge or steep climb against a barrage of arrows would be the only options, with ladders or siege towers rendered useless by the castle's natural landscape and position. Advancing across the bridge to the gatehouse meant navigating a choke point of arrows. The gatehouse, like any medieval stronghold, featured proven defensive features. The portcullis, an iron drop gate, could only be lifted out of place, and machicolations overhanging the castle walls allowed defenders to drop various deterrents onto the enemy below. Distinct from machicolations, murder holes were an internal system for dropping or shooting at enemies who breached the wall or gate. Arrow slots, often overlooked in design, permitted internal defenders to shoot arrows at a wider range of angles without compromising protection. Crenellations around the walls provided top defenders with protection and slots to shoot arrows. This was truly a magnificent fortress. But how were its defense tested? How did it become such a marvel? Who were the masters behind its evolution? And why is it nothing more than a pile of rocks today? 1071 to 1074. Our journey begins not at the site we know today as Montgomery Castle but here, a mile from today's castle ruins. This mound of earth barely visible today was the original site of the castle. In a bold and visionary move, Roger de Montgomery 
the distinguished Earl of Shrewsbury built the mod in Bailey timber castle known as Hendomen. 1102, a pivotal juncture for Hendomen as it underwent a change of guardianship following Robert of Bellium's ill-fated rebellion. The castle transitioned into the hands of Baldwin de Boulers, a figure who would play a significant role in shaping the castle's fate in the ensuing years. 1215, the fort faced its most formidable challenge when Prince Llewellyn, no not in, though probably just as flamboyantly dressed, a figure of considerable influence, unleashed his forces upon Montgomery. The once impregnable fortress found itself under siege. The siege led to the fort's downfall, as Prince Llewellyn succeeded in demolishing the fortifications. Ten Domen, once a symbol of authority and strength, went from timber to tinder, no not the dating app. Tinder, as in firewood, the destruction of the castle marked the end of the de Boulers chapter in its history. 1223. Montgomery Castle underwent a significant transformation under the skilled guidance of the renowned architect of the time, Hubert de Burgh. This pivotal moment marked the commencement of a meticulous rebuild, positioning the castle a mile southeast from its original site. The reconstruction project, spanning five years, not only restored the fortress in stone, but also imbued it with new features that spoke to the architectural ingenuity of the era. Why it took the English so long to learn that timber castles burn, but stone castles do not, I will never know. Under Hubert de Burgh's watchful eye, Montgomery Castle emerged from the rubble as a formidable structure. The new castle incorporated an inner ward, flanked by two imposing gatehouses that stood as sentinels. The relocation of the castle to a strategic southeast position underscored the importance of both tactical advantage and aesthetic consideration in medieval architecture. 1228, Montgomery Castle faced a formidable challenge when Prince Llewellyn attempted to breach its defenses. However, the castle's occupants, undeterred by the threat, responded with strategic acumen. Recognizing the need for enhanced protection, they embarked on further fortifications by constructing a middle and outer ward. 1233, the castle's endurance was tested when it faced another attack. This time, the well tower bore the brunt of the assault, sustaining damage that necessitated a re-roofing effort. The meticulous repair and re-roofing of the well tower highlighted the castle's commitment to maintaining its functionality amidst the challenges of siege warfare. 1267, the castle played a pivotal role in shaping the political landscape of Wales as it hosted significant negotiations culminating in the Treaty of Montgomery. This historic event marked a key milestone in the relationship between England and Wales during the medieval period. The Treaty of Montgomery, negotiated within the walls of the castle, carried far-reaching implications for the Welsh Principality. In this landmark agreement, King Henry III made a momentous decision, conferring upon Llewellyn Ap Grufford the prestigious title of Prince of Wales. This act acknowledged Llewellyn's authority and sought to establish a more stable and cooperative relationship between the English crown and the Welsh Principality. 1282, Montgomery Castle found itself entwined in the events of the Welsh Wars, and its fate took a decisive turn after the Battle of Orwin Bridge. The castle's garrison played a crucial role as part of the English army that clashed with Llewellyn Ap Grufford's forces in this significant engagement. The Battle of Orwin Bridge marked a turning point in the conflict, with the English emerging victorious over Llewellyn's forces. Montgomery Castle's garrison, having contributed to this triumph, experienced a shift in its role. With the military threat diminished, the castle's focus transitioned from being a frontline fortress to assuming a different function within the medieval landscape. In the aftermath of the battle, Montgomery Castle underwent a transformation in its purpose. The castle evolved into a facility for confinement, serving as a prison rather than a bastion of military might. 1402, Montgomery Castle faced a formidable challenge when Owain Glinder, sounds like an elvish name to me, the charismatic and influential Welsh leader amassed a formidable army and launched an attack on the walled town of Montgomery. This event, 
was part of Glinder's broader uprising against English rule in Wales, and the assault on Montgomery played a significant role in the regional conflicts of the time. The outcome was the breaching of the town's defenses, leading to its capture and subsequent destruction. The impact of this attack was profound, as the town walls were left in ruins, signaling the end of Montgomery as a fortified settlement. Unlike some towns, that might have been rebuilt after such an event, Montgomery faced a different fate. The town walls were never reconstructed, and the area remained in a state of ruin for almost two centuries. Over the years, the original walls of Montgomery disappeared, leaving only the town ditch as a vestige of the once mighty fortifications. This disappearance might be attributed to a combination of natural decay, neglect, and perhaps deliberate dismantling as the town transformed and evolved in the centuries that followed. 1642 In 1642, against the backdrop of the onset of the First English Civil War, Montgomery Castle found itself entangled in the complexities of the conflict. The predominantly royalist sentiments in mid-Wales manifested in the castle being held by Edward Herbert, a staunch supporter of King Charles I. As the Civil War unfolded, Montgomery Castle became a strategic stronghold in the royalist camp. Edward Herbert, a prominent figure aligned with the royalist cause, assumed control of the castle and played a key role in maintaining royalist influence in the region. The castle's strategic location in Mid-Wales made it a crucial asset in the broader military landscape of the war. The First English Civil War, characterized by ideological and political divisions between the Royalists and Parliamentarians, ushered in a period of intense conflict across England, Scotland, and Ireland. Montgomery Castle, under the stewardship of Edward Herbert, became a symbol of Royalist resistance in the heart of Wales. 1644, the fortunes of Montgomery Castle took a decisive turn as Edward Herbert surrendered to the advancing parliamentarian forces. The parliamentarians, led by Sir Thomas Middleton and Thomas Minton, secured control of the castle in a significant development. The surrender marked a shift in power dynamics, with Montgomery Castle transitioning from royalist to parliamentarian control. The capture of the castle was a strategic achievement, consolidating their influence in the region and further contributing to the unfolding narrative of the war. However, the story did not end with the surrender. The Royalists, undeterred, attempted to retake Montgomery Castle in what would become one of the largest battles of the Civil War. In this significant clash, the Royalist forces faced the Parliamentarians in a fierce struggle for control of the castle. Ultimately, the Parliamentarians emerged victorious, repelling the Royalist attempt to reclaim Montgomery Castle. The aftermath of this battle solidified the Parliamentarian hold on the castle, marking a critical moment in the regional dynamics of the Civil War. 1648 Amid the chaos of war, the Parliamentarians, as part of their military strategy, opted to demolish the walls of Montgomery Castle. This decision, though met with objection from Richard Herbert, the son of Edward Herbert, was part of a broader campaign to dismantle fortifications that could potentially be employed again in a military capacity. The objections raised by Richard underscored the complexities and personal stakes involved in the fate of these fortifications. The symbolic and familial ties to the castle, coupled with the strategic considerations of the parliamentarians, created a tension between personal sentiment and military pragmatism. 1655 Despite the extensive destruction wrought upon the outer defensive elements of the castle, Richard Herbert chose to reside within its walls. His decision to live amidst the remnants of a once mighty fortress spoke to the enduring connection between the Herbert family and Montgomery Castle. It was a testament to the resilience of individuals who clung to the familiar, even in the face of the castle's altered physical state. Tragically, Richard Herbert's connection to Montgomery Castle reached its poignant conclusion in 1655 when he passed away. His decision to reside within the castle found its culmination in his burial at Montgomery, marking the end of an era for the Herbert family and their association with this once mighty stronghold.
This is Pevensey Castle, one of the oldest stone fortifications in English history. It played at the center of the Norman Wars that inspired Game of Thrones. If you enjoyed the history of Montgomery Castle, then this video is a must watch. Click here to watch now.